Hey, it's Norman with I Save Tractors. In this video, I'm going to go over five things you should do to your new to you old vintage cast iron Kohler K series engine. Let's go. When I get a new to me tractor that has a Kohler K series engine, even if it's running well, I like to get a good baseline on the engine before I go any further. The truth is these engines are now at this point 40 to 50 years old. So when you get these engines, even if they're running well, they are really very close to needing some significant maintenance. So I like to get a lot of that stuff out of the way right at the beginning, as well as take a look at the engine so I can expect uh, future maintenance requirements. So the five things I like to do to a new to me Kohler engine is number one, replace the carburetor. Number two, check the valve clearance. Number three, perform a static governor adjustment. Number four, replace the points and condenser. And finally, number five, inspect the cylinder bore as well as the top of the valves and then replace the head gasket. Now let me demonstrate each of these five things starting with replacing the carburetor. As you're about to see, there's really not much to removing the carburetor from the engine. First, you want to disconnect linkages that lead to the carburetor, such as the throttle linkage and the choke linkage, as well as the fuel line. I have done this off camera. Then you remove the air filter cover, the air filter itself, the rear air filter mount like I'm doing now. This mount is just held on with three 1032 screws. Simply remove those, then you can remove the plate. And then you'll remove the throttle linkage that connects the throttle of the carburetor to the governor arm. And then you simply just unbolt the carburetor, as you'll see that I'm doing right now. Due to the tight space of the way the carburetor is, it's best to alternate between the left and right bolt, and then until it works its way out. Watch as I finish taking this carburetor off. We're going to jump ahead here to step two, which is checking the valve clearances. This is a good time to do this since the carburetor is now out of the way. To access uh, the tappets where you would adjust valve clearances on this Kohler K341, you first remove the valve cover. The valve cover is held on with this quarter-inch nut here. Turn that out, and then the valve cover is actually two covers and a few other components inside. Uh, just be extra careful when you're removing them. Make note of the orientation that they're in so you can put them back in the same way that they came out. On this particular engine, this little speed control lever here is in the way, so I'm loosening it up just to give me enough clearance to slide these covers off that stud and then remove everything else. If you do forget how all of these components go back into the engine, have no fear. Just visit isavetractors.com. We have a whole section on our website under the resources tab and then service manuals. We have dozens and dozens of service manuals for a variety of vintage cast iron engines, but especially these K-series ones. You can look up the service manual, and in the manual, there's a nice little diagram that shows how these covers go back in. So after you remove the valve cover, you have access to this valve area right here. Right here are the bottom of the valves and the top of the tappets. In order to adjust them, you want to take pressure off of the tappets, essentially. So a lot of people will try to find top dead center, which is a perfectly good place uh, to take these measurements. However, if you just turn the engine by hand until one valve is all the way open, the opposite valve will be all the way closed and resting on the lowest parts of the camshaft. That's what you want. So in this particular scenario that you see on screen here, the exhaust valve is all the way open, so that means the intake valve is all the way closed. So you can take a measurement with a feeler gauge like I'm doing on the closed valve, in this case the intake valve. In order to get the measurement for the exhaust valve, turn the engine again until the intake valve is all the way open, 
and the exhaust valve is all the way closed. Then you can take a measurement of the exhaust valve. For this particular Kohler K-Series engine, the clearances I'm looking for are 8 thousandths on the intake, 17 thousandths on the exhaust. And everything in my case checks out great, so I don't need to make any changes. If you did need to change the clearances, on top of the tappet, there is an adjustment nut. You just use two open-ended wrenches, one to hold the tappet in place and the other to adjust the adjustment screw on top. That will tighten or widen your valve clearance. Before we put the valve cover and all of its components back on the engine block, we just want to make sure that we clean off all of the old gasket material that's possibly stuck to the valve cover in this case or the block itself. We want to clean all that off. You can use a gasket scraper as well as some gasket remover uh, spray if you have to, but typically just a gasket scraper is all you need. And it's also important to use new gaskets when you put all of this back in. You can get all the components and parts that we're using in this video, by the way, at isavetractors.com. When you put this first valve cover plate on, take note that there is an indentation of the word top in the center of that plate. Make sure that is on top. And then that little hole in the bottom that I pointed to, that you want to make sure is, of course, on the bottom. This piece right here is a piece of spring metal. This is your reed valve. What this does is it allows crankcase pressure to leave the engine block as the piston is moving down into the crankcase. Yet when the piston goes back up, this reed valve closes and does not allow any pressure to be sucked into the crankcase. This is important. Make sure you put this on the correct way. The next plate that goes after it needs to be oriented in such a way where this little reed valve will be able to open and close freely. Once you get all these covers back on, all you have to do is screw the nut back on. Now be careful when you screw this nut on. All you want to do is gently snug it up. You'll see if you put in too much pressure, you'll actually start to collapse this outer valve cover. Uh, that means you're putting too much oomph into it. So all you have to do is, you know, screw it on finger tight, take a wrench, and just do a, you know, just add a tiny bit of snugness, and that's all that's required. Now we're going to put the carburetor back onto the block, but before we do, we want to clean off the intake gasket surface on the block. We want to get rid of all the old gasket material so when we put our new gasket on, it gives us a nice tight seal. Now you want to be careful. You don't want, you don't want to put any major deep scratches into this mating surface because uh, that could compromise the sealing ability of the gasket. Now we're going to be installing an iSave tractor carburetor for this Kohler K341 engine that I'm working on. These top screws here, the one directly on top is the high idle adjustment screw. The one offset to the side is the low idle screw. Now a common mistake customers make is they don't turn in these fuel fittings in tight enough. You want to make sure these fuel fittings are turned in all the way. It is a tapered thread, so the tighter uh, the further in this fitting goes, the tighter the seal. You want to be able to, uh, you know, give it definitely uh, several threads of engagement past finger tight. So if you ever have issues uh, with gas leaking out of the threads of these fittings here, all you have to do is turn it in a little bit further. See, that's how that fuel fitting should look for your information. 
By the way, these carburetors come fully adjusted by us when we ship them to you. So 99% of customers don't have to mess with the high and low idle fuel adjustment screws. All you have to do is fully install this fuel fitting on, bolt it to the engine with gaskets, and you're ready to rock and roll. Now to install the carburetor back onto the engine, all you have to do is put the proper gasket between the carburetor and the block. You can use a regular gasket like I'm using here. There are also some configurations of engines, and you can do this to any of them. Uh, you can use the larger quarter-inch spacer intake gaskets. Those gaskets uh, help reduce the amount of heat that is around the intake of the carburetor. That helps with fuel atomization, but these uh, regular gaskets work just fine as well. And all you have to do is uh, engage the two bolts onto the block, and you kind of slowly screw them in tightly left and right. You can use a slotted screwdriver on the original bolts uh, little by little, and then at the very end, you can use a wrench to get your final torque. Now, you don't want to tighten these carburetors on too tight. You just kind of want to get them tight enough. Uh, the exact specs are in the service manual on our website, but they're not super critical for this uh, connection point here. Now that the carburetor is installed back on the block, all you have to do is reconnect the linkages, the fuel line, reinstall the air filter covers, your air filter, and you're good to go. Okay, next up is the static governor adjustment. What this adjustment essentially does is it puts in sync what's happening on the outside of the engine with the governor arm and syncing that up with what's happening on the inside of the engine with the governor gear. If you ever have erratic RPM movement on your engine running, one of the first things you should do is do a static governor adjustment. Now, this governor arm, it's simply clamped onto this pivoting rod, which is called the governor cross shaft. So sometimes, if these bolts work loose and the governor arm loosens up, it kind of shifts its position on this pivoting arm, the governor cross shaft, and that throws off what's happening with your governor gear off. So to do this adjustment, you simply have to loosen up this little clamping nut and bolt configuration right here. You pull the governor arm all the way counterclockwise, which is bringing it to wide open throttle. You take a set of pliers like I'm doing, and you turn it all the way counterclockwise until it stops. And you see me here, I kind of go back and forth first. I just want to make sure that pivoting point is moving freely. Since it is covered in paint, I just want to make sure I am rotating it all the way counterclockwise. Once you rotate that cross shaft counterclockwise and your governor arm counterclockwise, you then tighten up that clamping nut and bolt that I'm doing right now. That will successfully make everything in sync. Now we're going to replace the points in condenser. This is a very important thing to replace. I do this every single time I get a new-to-me engine and tractor. Uh, points are things that break down over time. Every time they open up, there is an arc of electricity that will form, and over time that will deteriorate the contact points. So most engines that I come across, if they're lucky, they would have had points replaced once in their entire 40, 50, even sometimes 60-year-old life of these engines. They really should be replaced at minimum every couple of years. I guess it depends on how much you use it. But for me, it's like every one to two years I'll replace points on my working engines. So this is a, an inexpensive, easy-to-do replacement when you first get an engine. So to remove the points, it's as easy as removing that point cover that I already did. It's just held on with two screws. Then you remove the old points right there that's also held on with two screws and before I install new points what I like to do is I like to spray a little bit of carb cleaner on the contact points and then using a material like a dollar bill which what I'm going to use in this case you can use a paper envelope you just want to slowly rub the two contact faces of the points with this uh, paper or envelope. What this does is it removes any protective coating that might be on the points that are left over from uh, warehouse storage. 
just do this a couple of times and that's all you really have to do to get these ready. Here I am putting the wire that goes from the negative post of the ignition coil back on to the points. And then you reinstall the points back onto the block with those two screws that held on the old points. And then after you install the points onto the block, you want to turn your engine by hand until the points are all the way open. Now this is an important tip. If for some reason your points don't open at this point, don't panic. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the points. It just means that the, uh, the adjustment screw, the way it came from the factory, whether it's ours or Kohler OEM, all you have to do is loosen up that adjustment bracket, push it all the way towards the block like I just did, and then do it again. Turn the engine by hand until the points open all the way. Right now, we're not interested in the gap. We just want to turn the engine so the points open all the way to their widest opening, and then we can stop turning it. Now that the points are open all the way, I'm looking for a 20 thousandths feeler gauge, and I'm gonna use this feeler gauge to gauge the distance between the two contact faces of the points. I'm gonna stick it in there, and I'm gonna adjust the points with that adjustment screw, which is the screw I'm working on right there, you loosen that up, and then there's a little notch in it where you can use a little screwdriver. I believe my hand's about to block the camera shot, but you stick this little screwdriver in this slot, and that way you can open or close the distance that the contact points are, and you do that until you can slide a 20 thousandths feeler gauge between the point contact faces and you feel a light drag. That means that it is 20 thousandths of an inch. You tighten that adjustment screw back up and then you're done, that's it. You can turn the engine by hand a couple more times until they open up all the way again. Recheck your clearance with the feeler gauge and make sure it is still at 20 thousandths. If it is, you're good. Put the cover back on and move on to the next step, which is replacing the condenser. Replacing the condenser is also simple. The condenser is always connected, or should always be connected, to the negative side of these ignition coils. You simply remove the screw, or I should say the nut that holds the terminal on. You remove the wire terminal that is from the condenser off of the ignition coil. And then you remove the condenser, and then you put a new one on. Now it is important when you put a condenser back on that you just make sure it is grounded uh, to the block. So how is this? condenser grounded it's grounded through its case so just make sure wherever you screw it into has some bare metal to metal contact and you'll see me uh, do this in the video now <coughs> to note as well I turn this ignition coil around so the negative post is now closest to the condenser earlier in the video you saw me remove it from the opposite side and I don't want to confuse you all I did is loosen up the coil bracket and rotated the coil so it sits like this now. That way the wire from the condenser could reach its appropriate spot. Now the final step is to inspect the combustion chamber as well as the cylinder head. In order to gain access to the combustion chamber, you simply have to remove the cylinder head. These are all 3 8 inch bolts with 9 16 inch heads. Remove them all, and then we'll be able to see what's under there. So with the cylinder head off, this gives you an opportunity to inspect the combustion chamber, which is the top of the valves as well as the cylinder where the piston moves up and down. This is a good time to turn your engine by hand and observe the piston moving up and down. Examine the cylinder wall, see if there's any unusual scratching or galling or otherwise damage. Uh, see if the piston wiggles left or right excessively. When the valves come up, you can take a flashlight and look at the valve faces and the valve seats. Make sure everything looks nice and smooth. There's no pitting, no further additional damage. Inspect the head gasket, see if there's any evidence of uh, leak throughs or anything unusual. You'll notice that you're just looking at a static image right now, and that's because my camera had a malfunction, and I unfortunately was not able to save the footage of me going over these checks. But this is uh, essentially what you do. You just kind of look at everything, make sure everything looks uh, as it should. Before we put the cylinder head back on the engine, there are a few things we want to do at first. First, I want to clean off 
the underside of the cylinder head using a plastic scraper. You just want to scrape off as much of these carbon deposits as you can. And then we're going to check the cylinder head for flatness. To check for flatness, you want to put the cylinder head against a flat surface, such as a granite surface plate, a granite countertop, or a glass countertop. And you want to see if you can slide a 3 thousandths feeler gauge under the cylinder head between the bolt holes. If you can, it means you need to reflatten it. And to reflatten it, one of the best ways to do it is to use a granite surface plate like I'm using. You can also use a glass or granite countertop. You uh, put a piece of sandpaper on it. You wet it down, and then you slowly sand it back and forth until you can't slide a 3 thousandths feeler gauge underneath the cylinder head anymore. Now, when you put the cylinder head back on, it's always a good idea to use brand new head bolts. These head bolts are simply grade 8, 3 8 inch coarse thread bolts that you can get from your local hardware store. The length can vary between application, but for the most part, these bolts are usually between 1.5 inches to 2 inches in length. Some tractor configurations put these little spacers uh, between the head and the top of the bolt. For those, they typically take the longer bolts but you can simply match the length of your bolts by comparing them to your old ones. Now, when you install head bolts back into the block, you want to add a lubricant, either an oil, a WD-40, or something similar, to the threads of the bolt before you turn them in. That will help give you an accurate torque measurement. And when you install these bolts, you want to torque them in increments uh, until they reach their final torque spec, and you want to torque them in sequence. All of this information can be found in the service manual, which we also have for free on our website at isavetractors.com. For this particular Kohler K341, I'm going to be torquing the bolts to a final torque of 30 foot-pounds, but I'm going to start by torquing them to 20 foot-pounds in sequence and then go back around and do it to 25 foot-pounds, and then finally go back around and get them until they are 30 foot-pounds. This is how I like to do it. And this doing it incrementally like this will ensure that you install the head evenly onto the block to get maximum sealing ability. And also, uh, obviously, use a brand new head gasket when you put the head back on. And you don't need to use any additional uh, gasket sealer. You can if you'd like. And if you do for added insurance, make sure you use like a copper a uh, high temp RTV sealant or something similar. And here's the engine running after these five things that I did to it. This is for a wheel horse front end loader project that I'm working on. That video will be ready shortly. This engine doesn't have a muffler attached to it right now, so it is particularly loud. Oh, but boy, do we love that loud sound. Well, there you have it. Those are five things that I recommend you to do to your new-to-you old vintage cast iron Kohler K-Series engine. I hope you found this video informative and enjoyable. Uh, if you ever need any new aftermarket parts for your vintage cast iron engines such as this Kohler K341, please check us out at isavetractors.com. We make and sell almost everything you would need for these old Kohler K-Series engines, including carburetors, ignition components, gaskets, seals, pistons, connecting rods, valves, etc. We also have parts for the entire tractor, such as wheel bearings, uh, choke levers, uh, choke cables, throttle levers, throttle cables, hour meters, regulator rectifiers. I can't even think of them all. There's so many, but please check us out at isavetractors.com. My name is Norman. Thank you for saving the tractors.